Sickle cell disease is um, a blood genetic disorder, usually inherited from parents, and it occurs when um, there is a mutation on the chromosome 11 of the hemoglobin gene. The hemoglobin gene is the gene found in red blood cells. Now, when this um, mutation happens in an individual, it is called a sickle cell trait. But then the sickle cell disease happens when um, you have it from both the mother and the father coming together in one child, and that now causes the sickle cell disease, which you call the HBSS. Okay, so for many others, they could be AA, AS, that's, what you, that's where you hear that. But when it comes together, it becomes the HBSS. Diagnosis of a sickle cell disease happens after the first year of life, usually because um, the fetal the maternal hemoglobin or blood cells could still be present in that child. And so genotype is done classically to do a genotype test after the first year of life in any child. Uh, is it possible to do a diagnosis even in utero? Yes, it is possible with advancing technology. It's also possible to do it very early in life. But more often within our regular findings within our, this part of the world, it's usually after the first year of life. Sometimes parents may not even be aware, especially in older years where people were not aware of the genotypes. Um, they're usually not aware until the first symptoms occur. And after these symptoms and going to the hospital, then a diagnosis of sickle cell is made. But in recent times, people can pick it faster than it has always been. There is what we call the sickle cell crisis. It is a mixture of several clinical disorders that a child or an adolescent, as the case may be, presents with. And um, you either wait for these clinical symptoms or you diagnose by physical looks. So oftentimes you notice that that child is weak. That child looks um, slightly sickly. There's usually frontal bossing on the head, it's usually elongated fingers. That's talking about the physique of that child, elongation of bones. And um, um, yeah, these are physical um, features you'll find. But then um, in terms of symptoms, you are looking at one of the symptoms such as the vaso occlusive crisis which is the commonest symptom sickle cell disease patients or sickle cell patients apparently appear with that more often than not that's what drags them to the hospital it comes with pain at the joint areas these joints such as the knee joint the ankle joint the shoulder the elbow very excruciating pain usually when you ask them in a scale of 0 to 10 they tell you it's 9 or 9.5 as the case may be and so this um, this is as a result of poor blood flow in those areas. So there is a high level of lactic acid accumulated within this joint and causing crystal salt accumulation. And so there's pain. The remedy for that usually is a lot of hydration. All right. Now other symptoms could be abdominal pain. They're usually prone to salmonellosis, which is what we call typhoid fever. They are always also very prone to enlarged um, spleen. So you talk about um, splenic sequestration, which is enlargement of the spleen, because the spleen serves as a storehouse or a, a dumping site. So it traps all the bad red cells and so squeezes the whole blood into it. And so the patients become, that place becomes very tender and painful. One other thing you will notice amongst them is they're usually very pale. They look very pale so sometimes you could say are you are you sick you know you could also notice that they have a tinge of jaundice in their eyes so they're usually ecteric and reason is because there's a lot of breakdown of the red blood cell leading to hyperbilirubin accumulation in the body first risk associated with the sickle cell disease is death i mean at every time they can easily die Either they die of excessive pain or they die of drug overdose. I've seen a sickle cell patient that was recurrently using tramadol injections on himself because, uh, because of, not just because of the pain relief, but the feelings he gets. And so he got used to it and kept stabbing himself. You know, so death can be one of them. And this death could also be due to drug overdose or even um, um, organ failure. You know, because of the poor blood flow circulation to several of these organs, there could be failure in these organs. 
and then you can have even wound they could have injuries severe chronic injuries like i said the one that was stabbing himself on his tie the, he came down with a chronic sore on the tie very large and he had to be admitted all right in for several other treatments they could even come down with um with things like um even sores around the joints yeah they could come down with arthritis okay so with at that level they are not able to walk properly they become very slender the joints become swollen and not able to bear their weight okay sometimes it becomes even very difficult to give birth normally so vaginal births can be um, can be an issue with sickle cell um, crisis patients or sickle cell patients uh, many other cases they are usually always sick recurrently sick so there's always a case of repeated um, hospital admissions and of course easily infected all right stress ranging from emotional stress to mental stress to physical stress all forms of stress has to be reduced a regular hospital visit for checkups so usually i tell some of them to come in get to know their stable state blood levels pcv and all of that so that you can tell once there's a change in any of these things Because of our traditional origin and culture, many people believe that sickle cell disease is a curse on people or on a certain environment or certain tribes, it's peculiar to tribes. No, it's not. It is the same in Africa, it's the same in, in around the Caucasian environment. And so it's just simply the inheritance of this mutated gene from the mother and from the father. In the days of ignorance, it was improved and it was increased. Right now that light is gradually coming, the numbers are declining. So education and information has played a vital role in the, in the spread or in the, um, in the hazard that sickle cell disease pose. Many other people think that in sickle cell disease, um, they don't outgrow a certain level. Okay, they don't grow up to 22 years of age. And if they do, they can grow forever. Well, that's also not true. It could happen at 40 years, could happen at 70 years of age. The point is they are not able to withstand the pressure that every regular individual can. So Nigerians generally don't know. They treat some of them as either outcasts or treat them in a different way. But um, I'm starting to let you know that sickle cell disease in Nigeria is very real and has taken a greater part of the population close to 20 percent of our general population that makes up to um, four to ten million um, nigerians walking around with sickle cell disease first within our community within our environment what we know about is management of sickle cell disease um, it's only advanced technology that they're beginning to try out treatment which is the which the, the final level is the bone marrow transplant, all right? But aside that, you have management, and the management ranges from regular hydration, okay? So when this sickle cell patient keeps getting, so most times you see them with bottles of water, so regular hydration, and then of course, um, some blood, um, blood boosters, but they have to be careful because um, originally or ordinarily, they have iron um, overdose or overload, um, already because there's excessive breakdown of red cells pro releasing iron into the blood so you do not take iron containing blood um, boosters all right and then of course a, a good good diet all right would help so generally these are managements okay and of course a regular visit I recommend that uh, a monthly visit to the hospital will not be bad um, for all it for all this what just check just see how you're doing all right and then of course a proper rest these things would help maintain the lifespan of the sickle cell patient and lastly taking every form of crisis as an emergency um, sometimes they could get so used to it that um, well we know that's what's going to happen and you probably don't know that this one is just about to take his or her life mm -hmm. you never can tell when the ball will switch so it's important that you know every crisis is taken as an emergency